Let's have a look at doing book covers that grab attention. And we'll start with how to design your book covers. Starting with your design, the one you're going to put on the front cover. Now you've probably done this um, with a mock-up sketch perhaps. It's all you need, just a sketch on a piece of paper to broadly outline what you're going to design before you even put anything on the iPad. But there may be more than one element. If you're doing ebooks alone for KDP or Apple or Kobo, for example, it still requires as much effort as though you were doing a hard cover. Now, what cover template to use? If you're going to use a template at all, this one that you can see here is from a template I discovered on the internet, but that's not the one we're going to use. I've done that in the previous video. An effective cover doesn't just make a design three-dimensional, it brings the design to life. When you're working on a cover, keep the following tips in mind. Show the genre in action. Keep the genre focused. Stay away from stark stock photos. In other words, don't just use one image that you grab from the stock studio, for example. Showcase multiple well-thought-out design elements. Now, in this exercise, we do the digital cover only. This is for a digital book, not, uh, not a, a printed book. So we don't need a spine or a back cover. These are relatively easy to do, but if you get them wrong, KDP and the others will reject your cover. So make sure you get them right. Now, the standard KDP cover size is 2560 pixels by 1600 pixels. That's height and width. This is the KDP recommended size. And you'll see from their descriptions, you can go above that and you can go slightly below it, 2,500 pixels by 1,600. Well, it'll be slightly less than 16. So let's begin our cover. Too much talk. We'll start by placing a picture of Manhattan. You can get this from the stock studio. Don't worry, you'll be altering it quite a lot. Never use just standard stock images, unless you intend modifying it. And you can see I'm pointing at the stock studio there in the right hand margin. I'm doing this on an iPad and the desktop version will follow this one. Now firstly, I'll put an overlay to give it some mood. A deep purple with the mode set to overlay and opacity set to 84%. Now you can see that's given it a slightly moody look. Now the images I'm going to place on there need a background, otherwise they'll disappear into the, the cityscape. I want to add some images that are portraits of various people. Well, a portrait, if you like. This requires a base for the images. You can't just place images on top of each other. So place a white base over the image of the city. I've used a brush, but you could use a gradient, and you can see what I've used there. It's an image overlay, and the mode of that image is normal, but you can see I've used the brush, the red arrow pointing to the brush, and just pasted in, or brushed in, um, the white, smooth white circle. Now the genre, I want a private eye as the centerpiece, as this is the leading protagonist of my story. You can't tell your story on the cover, but you need to clearly define the genre. So let's begin by extracting just this figure and placing it front and centre. As it is, it's too large, but I will refine it. I also need to keep in mind where the title and author are going to be placed. Now that looks terrible at the moment, but I'm going to fix it. There we go, I've reduced it, applied a gradient fill, added over the top on a new layer. Then when placed within the main image, with the mode set to multiply. And you can see that in the detail there. Rather than the hard edges, the fill layer has reduced that. And I did that separately 
I took the uh, image of the, the man with the coat on in a separate um, project and applied the fill to him, exported the uh, transparent background PNG and placed it on my working cover. It's rather difficult if you do it the other way, but just to take it from me, it works just as well. Finally, I put a body in the background. Now that adds a little bit of interest to it without um, overloading the image with ideas. Now we can deal with the author and title. Author and title, sorry. Your cover text should only contain the title and it must be the same as the first inside page cover title. The author and a short blurb. Remember, you're trying to stand out on the bookshelf against the thousands of other books there. And that's it. Export the PNG version. You can see there, there's got, you've got your title, your author name, there's a bit of a blurb at the top, and the man in the trench coat and the body in the background and mystery in Manhattan tells you everything you need to know about the genre, I would think. And there's the finished item. Now that was that was a fairly mm, quick job, and you can you can work with that and improve it, make it different. It depends on your story, obviously. Well, let's start this recording off right here in Affinity Photo version two on the iPad. Now this exercise will work equally well on the desktop, so all you have to do is just follow the same commands of opening. A new file. So let's start right there with new. Now I've just tapped, let me do that again so you can see it. On the new icon there, new document, now we want new document, right that one there. And I don't want architectural but I've got some presets made up in a, a folder I've called clip art. Now that's pretty straightforward. And what we're doing, of course, is KDP cover. Now, that's the one down the bottom here. That's easily seen. Now, the page width is 1600 pixels. The page height is 2560 pixels and DPI of 300. The document units are pixels. The actual size zoom is default. Image placement embedded. Now, there's a good reason for using embedded documents, even though it can make big files even bigger. But this is only really a one-page file. So um, you just prefer embedded. So images you put in it are embedded into the image. You're not linking to them in some directory on your um, iPad or desktop. Now, there's a reason for the 1600 pixels by 2560 page height. For a KDP ebook, if you like, but you know the Kindle books, the ones you download and read on your on your device, the KDP recommend that the size of those is 2560 height by 1600 width. That's the KDP recommended height. There are bigger, bigger and smaller sizes you can use. Mm. But they recommend that, so if you want a trouble-free experience, go with what they recommend. Now, they don't say much about margins, but I like to set margins so you can confine your major graphics areas to a particular area. Now, we've got margins on there, and that's all we need. They're probably a little bit wide, but... Um, that really does help to pull your image together when you're trying to set these things up. Now, we're not worried about bleed on here. We've got general. You'll notice that bleed doesn't show up on here anywhere. We don't need a transparent background. A white background's fine because if you're printing on white paper, if there's white in the background, it's going to be white anyway. You don't actually print white. And that can avoid a lot of confusion if you leave it just there, not transparent. We don't want to tick the transparent background. No margins are available there. Well, margins are available, my apologies, but no bleed. 
So you can't set bleed, which may be a bit of an issue because KDP do specify bleed, but that's only if you're setting up a print book. If you're setting up a cover for an ebook, for a KDP book that you've uploaded there, a digital book, let's, let's get that straight. We're not doing ebooks, we're doing a digital book, then you need a digital cover and they won't ask you about mud, um, bleeds. Okay. Enough rambling there. Let's continue right on. Click OK. And you'll see it's created a nice little page for us. And that's the specific size. Let me just shrink that down and I'll move it over a bit. I like it sitting over there because we're working in landscape because when you turn on things like layers, it's not going to interfere with the image itself. Now, I've got a fairly small iPad here. In fact, I've got an iPad Mini 6, which is very small. But I'll show you, it works just as well. Now, there are no layers there yet. And I'm going to turn right at this stage, I'm going to turn on the little magnet there, which is snapping. That's just what we want. Now, you'll notice that right up here in the, in the right-hand corner, if you tap that, it gets rid of all of your toolbars. Just tap it again and back they come. Now that's just what we want at this stage. Now while we're here, and before we continue any further with this exercise, let's go back here to there and we'll save as, oops, just click on the, tap on the, um, the little sandwich stack there and we're going to save as Let's just close that. Um, what shall we call it? KDP cover. KDP cover. It makes it easy to find. We're only doing the one. You might have a thriller. You might give it the title of the book that it's going to actually cover. We don't want to save the history, so just click on save. Now, there we go. I'm not working with iCloud anymore. I've put it in Dropbox. I'm going down to Affinity Photo right there and move it into Affinity Photo. So now when you're working away you just click on that, click on Save. Too easy. So hi guys. Let's begin designing our own ebook or digital book cover for KDP and some of the other digital book platforms. They all have their differences, but you can source the differences from their websites. For now, we're concerned with KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, of course. So what criteria does my eBooks cover image need to meet? The cover image you upload will appear on your Amazon detail page. You can choose to upload your own cover image, or you can use the free cover creator tool that KDP have to design a cover for your Kindle ebook or even your paperback. The format and quality of your ebook's cover image must meet the following specifications. If your image does not meet this criteria, it may not be approved for use, and that can take ages. Let's begin by creating our master page. So, select New for New Documents. There we go. Now, what I want to do here, go right down the bottom. You can see there's all sorts here. My presets. Now, I'm going to create a preset. So let's start with one that's already in pixels, unnamed one in pixels. Now, the ideal dimensions for cover files are 2,560 pixels in height. 2560. So we've got that by 1,600 pixels in width, 1,600. 
100 pixels in width. Now, for best quality, particularly for higher definition devices, your image should be a minimum of 2,500 pixels in height. But their recommended one is 2560, so that's what we're using. The cover image should not exceed 10,000 pixels in height and width. And a bit of advice, stick to the recommended dimensions of 2560 by 1600 pixels. The actual image ratio can be used if you have a much larger image to scale down. I might add this, an ideal height width ratio of at least 1.6 to 1. And that means for every 1000 pixels in width, the image should be 1600 pixels in height. So you can create a much larger image if you need to be careful with this and then reduce it in size, so long as your aspect ratio remains the same. Now the dots per inch is set at 72 pixels. That may seem low to you, but it's important because your file size is limited and the lower DPI allows you to stay under the 50 megabytes maximum file size. If you go over that, it won't be accepted. Now, the document unit is pixels, the actual size, default, etc. Image placement embedded. Always like to embed the, the fonts, files, and anything that's in it. Now, the color profile is not CMYK, but RGB. Make sure you select RGB. Now margins while we're on it. I'm not going to include margins because this is a cover. Margins are interesting because you can keep your documents nicely lined up, the various images. Now nine pixels, zero pixels there we've got. So, okay. Do we want margins? No, let's not use margins. You can include them if you want to. Now, before we go any further with this, that's unnamed. What I want to do is create a preset out of those measurements. The preset I'm going to use is KDP C O V E R, KDP cover, and the category it'll be put in this one here, my presets. So let's make that. KDP and there it is KDP cover so when you come back to it everything's the same now if you want to put margins in it all you do is come back to that one put margins in it and you can either make it another preset with margins or not now finally defining boundaries or borders if you need to Cover art with white or very light backgrounds can seem to disappear against the white background of everything else. So try adding a narrow 3 or 4 pixels only border in medium grey to define the boundaries of the cover. Finally for this section where we're setting up, and you'll notice I haven't printed create, pressed create yet, the content of the cover image must not infringe other publishers or artists copyright on the same cover. In other words, don't use other people's designs. If you are using designs and wording, make sure it's your own or you own the copyright to it or you have permission to use it. Don't mention pricing or other temporary promotional offers. That's not the place for it. The cover is what people see on your book, on the shelf, and that's what attracts them to it. So now we have our blank document set up ready for the design. So we hit create and there's our blank document. Now we've got transparent background there which I don't want. Okay, what did I forget? Let's just close that file. We don't want it. Let's go back to New KDB cover. The color. And there it is. I forgot to untick transparent background. If you send a document with a transparent background to KDP, they will have a fit. 
Now, it's that easy. We don't want a background in there, but you'll notice that now that's in there as a preset. That's in presets, KDP cover, the layout, everything's set. Transparent background has been ticked again. We should be able to refresh that, but we can't. Okay, let's just create our cover, and there it is. Remember that if you're in future, there's your cover. Okay, just continuing right along for a moment, we have our cover. Now what? The first thing you should do here is save as. Because at the moment you can see it's untitled and we want to save it as a cover. Now I'm going to save it in Dropbox in Affinity Photo. Is that in Dropbox? Let's just check. Affinity Photo, save as KDP, KDP cover. Now, how easy is that? Save, already exists, so let's overwrite it. That's one I baked earlier on. <laughs> okay, KDP cover up the top, easy. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is begin our design. Okay, so let's step through this on the on the PC. Oh, lovely, working from home. The dogs are having a fit over something. Never mind, here we go. It's the same process. We'll click on File and New. A dog will settle down in a moment. Um, now this may or may not be working fast enough. What I want to do is set up a preset. So I'm going to find something that's in pixels already, and there isn't anything. So it doesn't really matter. Let's select A4 for this exercise. Now I'm going to set up in pixels because this is what we want pixels default prefer embedded now the dpi i forgot to mention earlier on has to be 72 the size is 2560 pixels width nope sorry height 1600 in width and the height is 2560. Now you will remember that from the previous ones. Color, no transparent background. We don't want a transparent background, but the color is RGB. We're not printing this, so we don't need CMYK. Now you can see it's got margins by default. Um, I'm not going to use margins in this preset. So we'll turn those off. We've just got our layout. 1,600 pixels wide, 2560 pixels high, which is what we want. Okay, now for some reason I changed that or it changed it. However, I want to make a preset out of this. So I'll click on that, create a preset, and call it, not A4, but KDP. KDP cover is too easy. Category, architectural devices, print. Mm -hmm. Let's cancel that for a moment. Go down here. This shows you I haven't done this before. Create a, 
category my presets okay too easy now we have a category down there somewhere called my presets now I've still got that tool there I'll go and create my preset now call it KDP C O V E R KDP cover could probably call it digital cover because that's where it'll be and I'll put it in my presets but KDP cover will do for now okay now there it is my presets KDP cover nice DPI 72 2560 height 1600 pixels width and RGB color click create There we go. Now, okay, so I'm on a bit of a slow machine here, but it will create it eventually. Don't panic. Now, I'll just move that over there a little bit. What I'll start by doing is putting in the stock video, a uh, stock image. We've got the image loaded, and that's just where we want it. Now, let's go to layers. There's our image layer there. Now what I want to do is put another layer on top of that. Don't want to mix. No, that's all right. I'll just leave that. Don't even. I don't even need to to lock that layer. New layer. There we go, new layer on top of that. Let's go to color and find a nice purple. Mm. There's a deep blue, deep blue. A little bit further that way, I think, because what I want to do with that is actually turn that into a fill layer. I'll just leave that there for the moment. Go to layer, new fill layer and use that purple and there it is there. Now that layer there, because it was too much, was just a blank layer. I'll just delete that. It's the fill layer I want. You think, ah, what are we doing with that? Well, let's have a look at that layer. What I want to do with that is set its mode, its normal mode. No, oh, why is that doing that? No, we don't want it that dark. What I want is if I can find it. Overlay. There we go. Now that's fine. Let's go back there. I've got too much road in front there. What I want to do is go back to that layer, select that. I've got that. I can, because that image is still in there, you see, there we go. Just about there. Now that's got rid of that tarmac in front of that. We've still got our fill layer there. And then we can proceed to put in the rest of the elements. And that's all we need to do, except that we've got an untitled issue going on here. So let's find Save As. Ho oh hum, ho oh hum. What I really need is a faster computer. And I think I've got that on the way. Okay, I'm going to call that KDP cover windows, so I know where it is. Now I'm going to Dropbox, Affinity Photo. This way, it doesn't matter what machine I'm on, I can edit this from the iPad or the Mac if I like. But I'll just save it there under that name. And there it is. That's all there is to it. How easy is that?
we could continue on, of course, and put in the uh, the guy at the top, and that's it. 